Hello and welcome to Pods Like Us. I'm Martin Quibell, known to my friends as Marv, and this time I'm speaking with Ian from Cult Connections. That is a film and television podcast with, with Ian. Hey Ian, thanks for speaking with me today. You are very welcome, Marv. I, can I call you Marv by, by the way? Of course you can. Does that work? Of course. Yeah. Excellent, right. good. So have you got a favourite um, film or film and or television memory from the past? Oh, gosh, that's, uh, that's a good one. Um, I think uh, the television, television memory, um, I think we all like getting um, they're scared or they're a little bit scared sometimes. And, yeah. um, and thinking back to childhood, uh, things that used to scare me, of course, um, the Doctor Who, which is a huge favourite of mine, it's a show that I love, um, you know, things like that. But one that really sticks in my mind is um, uh, the the TV series from, I think it's 1981, which was the day of the Triffids. So, yes. so, the, so the BBC, um, the TV series, and that absolutely frightened the life out of me and uh, and that and that sticks very much in, into the um the their the memory and even even these days and I've watched the series a good few times over um but even now just like like um they're the title sequence and their music and it it sends their chills and uh so that so that's uh um I don't know if that's a favorite memory but that that certainly s- sticks in there the mind would I would they go with that one I think yeah I think you've picked a good one there because I mean, you watch that show. I mean, I've watched it since, obviously, because um, I mean, although saying that, I remember it being on. Uh, but since then, I've read the book um, mm-hmm. and then seen the show again since. And I think it's one of the very few occasions where um, they've got it absolutely spot on, and it works mm. perfectly as 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 a as a um, you know, a film or TV version of a novel, it, it it gets everything absolutely right. And the Triffids themselves perfectly match the description in the book and then the the pictures that were in the book as well from back yeah. in the day, mm-hmm. uh, the yeah. John Wyndham book. And it's just a perfect, you know, property. Yeah, yeah, definitely. I mean, there is... Um... There's a two other versions. Obviously, there was a film version from from the um, their sixties, and then there was the later uh, their sort of mini series. I think it was it was a two parter, um, and the the two part their mini series is overall fairly 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 rubbish. Um, the 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 sixties TV um, uh, their film rather has has its um, their charms. And it's quite good, you know. But I think you're right in that uh, the 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 eighties, um, their TV series is is they're the best version so far. So, yeah, absolutely. It's like if um, if I think of something similar like the uh, War of the Worlds, I will always go back to the old the old Pal film, George Pal film from oh, the fifties. Now that's oh, now that's an interesting one, there, Marvin. Actually, I've. Funnily enough, and we're talking about about this, and obviously, and we will talk about my pod a lot more. But uh, um, both these things, so both both their novels here, I haven't covered yet, but they're both ripe for uh, uh, their sort of episodes, and uh, they they are ones that you know stick in my mind and think I must I must actually get round and they do those. Um, I would argue that. Um, Certainly, film or TV wise, for War of the Worlds, uh, there there's some good versions. Um, there's some there's some not so good versions, um, but I don't think we really have a uh, a sort of definitive version yet, or not one that I am 
totally satisfied with. However, um, my favourite war, war of the other world, so my favourite adaptation of that will always be um, their Jeff Wayne's um, yes. their musical version. Yeah. I love that. Um, yeah. And I remember listening to that, funnily enough, if we're talking about um, their memories and memories of uh, their, their, their childhood. Now, my dad had this album, so he had it, and I remember listening there, there to it on, on their headphones, uh, and that's a that's a scary um, the experience. Yeah. It's it's a great album, a great version of that story. I think. Yeah, I've got. Um, well, you, you know, being being some being a child or somebody from the UK, uh, I, I I thought everybody's parents had had that album. Really? <laughs> yeah, 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 definitely. Yeah, but uh, if, if we're going into that, then you know that that's that's incredible. I I, I actually agree with you that that's probably the best version that there is. Um, so. And then, and I have got the um, oh, I've got the one that was done on the radio. Was it in the forties or or something? By okay. Uh -huh. oh, oh, who is it? Um, oh, that, um, uh, or your Orson uh, Welles. Yeah. Orson Welles, yeah, uh -huh, yeah. So he did his his version, yeah, and uh, and very ground breaking as well. Funnily enough, and I haven't covered this on the show either, but there's a there's a Polish version, very loose version, um, mm -hmm. from from I think it's from 1980 actually or 1981 um, of of the the novel as well. Um, however, it tends to actually be it's more like um, the the 1984 um, mixed with a bit of um, the war of uh, the other worlds, but it's an interesting version. It's very, it's very different, and uh, I watched that recently. So um, yes. there's uh, there's so many there's there's so many versions of things that we know and we love, and and and, and often that we don't actually realise they exist. Um, so you'll so you'll think, oh well, I'll watch. I'll, I'll watch a certain film and you'll not realise actually somebody's already made it, you know, and they made it, you know, 30 years yep. previously or things like that. And uh, that's the kind of thing on my show that I, I really love. So, yeah. That's along similar lines to those little notes that I've put down the side of my show notes, those little bits that I've put in where, where I say sort of, for instance, you know, uh, Seven Samurai connects to the Magnificent Seven. Yeah, because uh -huh. yeah. Magnificent Seven is based on the Seven Samurai. Uh, Star Wars is based on a mixture of Hidden Fortress, the uh, the Kurosawa film Hidden Fortress, and the old Flash Gordon serials. Yeah, uh, uh -huh. but you, you can do that. You Jimbo connected to a fistful of dollars, and there's a film with Bruce Willis as well that was based on. Uh, Yo Jimbo as well, but I can't remember what he's called. Oh god! But he played a gangster. Yes. Uh huh. Um, oh gosh. And yeah. Uh -huh. There's some. There's some almost shot for shot recreations in the Bruce Willis film that are absolute. So uh, there's one specifically where there's Bruce Willis in the foreground in the film. We're getting all really. We're going to bore people to death if I keep on with this. Uh, but you've got Bruce Willis. <laughs> Well, the, well the, that's the, the nature of my show, Mav. I, I do bore people day, day to death with this exact thing because <laughs> that's what I like to cover. Well, that's it. I mean, with that, so you've this sequence I'm on about, you've got Bruce Willis at the forefront of the camera towards the front, like, um, um, oh, uh, the actor, uh, Mifun, oh, I can't remember his last uh, name yeah, now. Ha -ha, yep. Yeah, yeah. Um, that he was in the forefront in the shot in the original version, Yajimbo, mm -hmm. and then in the foot in the in the background, just about you can just about see it's it's not quite visible, but you can see almost like a horse or some horses in the distance. And on the Bruce Willis film, they're replaced in the uh, you know New York landscape in the background by cars in the mm -hmm. distance as well. And it, yeah. it's exactly the same with the same sort of um, blur on those things in the background as well. They've, they've basically done an exact copy of it. Yeah, yeah. And this, 
and this is it, I think, actually, funnily enough, and you're giving me ideas for, for, for their episodes for my show, Marv, which is which is great. But um okay. yeah, you're absolutely right. Like like uh, our, our favorite films or shows, um, you know, they don't stand on on uh, their, their their own, you know, they do reference other things or or um some some of their stories are so s- strong that they end up getting you know remade and or uh, they uh, adapted, as it were, in lots of different ways. So you know, because I don't like to think of uh, like their sort of remakes as as uh, such as that you're uh, like they're sort of adapting, you know, stories. And every film film they make has their own like their sort of vision of it, and and that's absolutely fine for me. I mean, you know, people go on about you know as as no no their sort of original you know storytelling, and I'm like, well. You know, there probably hasn't really been since about, you know, nineteen thirty. So, um, <laughs> yeah, that's just you know the nature of it. Yeah, um, and and instead of criticizing, you know, film film they make us for it, we should actually, uh, you know, celebrate it and, uh, you know, just say actually, you know, why not? Why not? Why not do new versions of their things and and you know see 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 what comes out of them. So I mean, with that with that in mind, I mean, go, go, going to um, War of the Worlds, you know, I'm going down tangents already. Mm-hmm. Um, do, do you think that the famous or infamous one Steven Spielberg directed with Tom Cruise? Uh-huh. Do you think that that version of of the War of the Worlds might have fared better because it was very much slammed by a lot of people? I don't think it's an awful film. I think it's an interesting film, but mm-hmm. do, do you think it might have fared better if they'd have given it a different title and just called it blah, 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 whatever, and then just put based on or inspired by War of the Worlds in the credits? Mm. That's an interesting one, isn't it? I mean, um, I mean, you can, you know, you can probably, you know, like things will be loosely... You know, based on their things, or yeah. or or a lot more, uh, uh, you know, maybe faithful to their the source, uh, 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 their sort of material, and um, you know, what if Spielberg wants to call it War of the Worlds, which it fairly much, it, you know, it was a surprise, um, uh, uh, their sort of attack, and it follows one their man and his, uh, you know, you know, quest. You know, through yeah. this, you know, process, you know, it follows, you know, Tom, Tom, the cruise, and and in that respect, that's quite similar to, to um, uh, uh, the 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 sort of novel. So in that way, it's quite faithful. Um, yeah. Yes, it modernizes it; it's a different setting, etc. But you know, the basic, you know, you know, sort of premise is, you know, how does one sort of person. Um, you know, survive during this, uh, this sort of attack, and um, and why not? And I think the success wise, I mean, I think I think it it, it made money. It wasn't a flop. Yep. The sort of critics might not like it. I think it's perfectly fine. Um, I would watch it again. Um, you know, I've got nothing anti about the film. So, uh, and why not? You know, if someone, you know, like like there's a there, there, there's a new well, well I say new, new, but there's an Anglo-French like this sort of TV version at the moment, uh, you know. So, so that's out. The, the, the BBC did a version not that long ago. I'm sure in five, you know, ten years time, you know, someone else is going to make it. And yeah, yeah why not? They're the, they're the more, they're the merrier. I'm Agent Scott, and I'm Cam the Provocateur. And we're from the Spy Hards Podcast. That's right. And you are listening to Pods Like Us, the podcast that also has the Midas touch. Hey, this is Brian with Concerts That Made Us Podcast. And you're listening to Pods Like Us, a great show about other great shows. But there, there are films where they are based on, for instance, so you know, some people might not 
think about, say, West Side Story is essentially a retelling of Romeo and Juliet, mm -hmm. for instance. And I mean, that's famously, they, they even admitted when, when that first came out in the 60s or late 50s that it was a retelling of that. But it, yeah. it's one that works, and sometimes they work. Yeah. But, I mean, you know, things like, you know, Robin Hood. You know, yeah. it's like there's countless versions of that their story, and why not? Um, uh, uh, King, uh, the sort of Arthur. I mean, that's bound to be, you know, there's bound to be another film version come along in, you know, five years' time and do that one. And uh, there's there's plenty of scope out there. And um, and and I think as well, if you've got a favourite version, then that's that's a uh, great. But you know, you know, someone. You know, one of the other versions will be someone else's favourite version, and there's and there's and there's room and there's you know you know scope for them all. So, so why not? So, um, so there you go. Somebody needs to remake the Spaceman and King Arthur at some point. They, I'm, I'm sure Disney have that lined up. I'm sure they've, I'm sure they're gonna, you know, spin that one out. Yeah, why not? They, they can even bring <laughs> Jim Dale back out of retirement. <laughs> or, or out of the sound booth because he does all voiceovers now, Jim Dale. Yeah, no, is he is, is he not Harry Potter? Did he not do the yeah uh, the the audio books? Yeah, very very successfully. So yeah, he did. yeah, and he's he the he's the voiceover guy for a few American television series as well. The narrator in a few of them. <laughs> well, good for him. Good for him. Yeah. But so um. Wow, we've gone into tangent already. So um, we'll go back to this. So what was, what was your earliest memory of um, podcasts then? You know, when did you start listening to them and what were you listening to? So listening, so so, so listening, Ma, very much sort of related to um, my love of uh, um, their football. So I like I like football. Um, their Sunderland's my... They're English, their team. They're, that's where I'm from originally, as, yep. as my accent might not quite uh, they sort of reflect that, but that's uh, uh, that's where I'm from. And um, so listening to a lot of, uh, uh, you know, football podcasts and sort of podcasts about uh, their Sunderland and just, you know, just for that that sort of aspect. And then, and, and then I got friendly with someone who, who does their own their podcast, and uh, he invited me on theirs, and I was a regular on that for uh, there for a while, talking about um, uh, um, uh, their football in in the their sort of general, um, yeah. and then and then I was like, oh well, what could I I I do? What could I do for myself? I was looking for something. Um, always loved films, their TV always been. You know, a bit of a this this sort of nerdy kind of person in that respect. Um, you know, like all the old cult sort of favourites and things like that. And I was like, well, hmm, like, you know, what could I do with that? Um, but was listening to some shows and having a look at it, what was already out there. Uh, um, and very much from the off, was very mindful of I've got to do. I've, I've I've got to do my own thing, so um, yeah. so so I did. I spent a lot of time sort of listening to, uh, you know, lots of different different pods. But it was the football ones that got me started, Marv, Certainly, so. I mean, I mean, the what what you've got is is interesting for, for sure because of the, the getting the. Um, I mean, we're not going to say it's completely one hundred percent, you know, because there's a lot of podcasts out there since we start since both of us have started, uh, but. Taking the the thing of looking at uh, these films and then seeing the connections therein to films from the past is an intriguing one to look into, mm -hmm. in, in essence. And um, and I was taken in also by, obviously, because I've gone into the you know the Japanese film um, film side of it as well. I was taken by mm -hmm. these little yeah. little in in between these. So so let's look at it. So. Most of the time, your episodes are you and somebody else, or, or one or more people as a guest, looking yes, into uh -huh. looking at, looking into these subjects and these films, and then the history and all the films that came of it or came before it that influenced yeah. it, and going into yeah, a deep uh -huh. dive there. 
but on the, occasionally you will also throw in the little shorter episodes and it's it's those as well that jumped out at me because some of those shorter episodes you did a really interesting season about this box set of japanese films that you got the samurai films and i was just automatically just yes i'm going <laughs> so there got, so yeah so what i did so i got um they're actually the 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 Hong Kong films, so they're yeah. so they're from Hong Kong. Yeah. Um, it's the the show scope box set, so volume one of that. So 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 they show show their studios made made lots of film, very uh, they're sort of prolific. Um, their studios studios and um, Arrow Arrow Video released this their box set of of some of the um, the. Uh, the sort of kung fu films, as it were, you know, yeah. like they're the martial arts films, um, of which there are countless. But um, anyway, I got this box set for um, their, their their Christmas, and and it's a lovely box set. Um, and I was looking at, it and I was like, God, how do how do how do we get started? I was just thinking, you, you know, because it's a big box. I, I think there's maybe twelve films, ten or twelve other films in it. Uh, and I was like, oh, God, I feel a bit overwhelmed with this. Um, so I just thought, you know what, I'm I'm just going to do a little solo episode. I'll watch one, and I'll just, you know, sort of gather my thoughts on it, and um, which is different from what I would normally do. It's certainly different from from uh, their sort of regular shows. But um, I did want to. So in a way, it was basically just to in incentivize me to actually watch all of the films, yep. um, but also knowing well if I do one, I kind of. Kind of have to do them all now, so so that's what I did. Yeah. But yeah, I mean, I mean, so so I, I noticed those, and then uh, yeah, as I said, Japanese, but you know, Japanese Asian cinema, I, I love. I like Asian cinema. cinema. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah. Um, so and then those ones that you mentioned that were on that box set, uh, I was suddenly thinking. It reminded me in a way because one or two of them, well, a couple of them, I've actually seen when I was uh -huh. younger, and it, and it, in essence, it was almost like a nostalgia trip, listening to you talking about those films and thinking, oh god, yeah, I'd forgotten that had happened and this had happened because it's so long since those films, but but yeah, I, I did, I watched a load of those in the eighties when I was a kid. Yeah, 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 and great films they are as well. Actually, they're really worthwhile and. And, and it's a super box set if you've got a it's not that cheap but if you want to get a lovely box set it's 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 a great so i would recommend that yeah and the choreography in it is astounding well 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 that's the thing so so the films themselves they are they are formulaic they do have a a formula they have a structure um but the do it so well and and you're right so they're the choreography they're the fighting um it's it's an art form and they and they were so good at it but you see the uh, their sort of progression so it starts like i think i think the first film's maybe 1971 and then they're the final film in the box set's about 78 or 79 but you can see like uh, uh, they're the progress that they make you know, throughout those those films and and the, and then the latter ones, some of the sequences are just they are amazing. They are they are an art form, and uh, um, but again, doing that that sort of research, and we think, oh well, you know, kung kung fu, and it's all martial arts, but um, or fighting skills, as it were. But actually, it comes from um, like their sort of Chinese, like their sort of ballet. So it's. Yeah. Um, like sort of juggling and uh, like this sort of gymnastics and and all kinds of different sort of elements all woven in, to, you know, give you these great, um, uh, um, you know, sequences. It's it's really good fun. Well, I I mean, if you go into the minutiae of it, then you can say that because people like even J Jackie Chan, he's a trained dancer uh, from when he was younger, and he said that, yeah. and then. Yeah. Um, not going away from from Asia, but somebody else who's known for fight films or films that have got really good fight to choreography in it. Van Damme was originally a dancer as well. Yeah, 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 very much so. It does. It's uh, um, it's that the 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 sort of choreography because what you have to do is work out, 
you know, your moves to do these uh, sequences and and show well actually what's going to work, what will, what will work up on 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 the screen, and they practice it and you know get the moves, you know, right down so so they can do these you know sequences and like you know you know two or three three sort of takes and they're done. Um, yeah, and that's and it's their craft work. It's their, the craft of it. It's like, it's an art. It really is. I mean, J Jackie Chan. I've always seen him in a way as a cross between uh, a really good dancer, but mixed with the um, oh, the incredible. Uh, I don't know how to say it. Almost athleticism, in a sense, and humour of Buster Keaton. Yeah, yeah, yeah. That's an interesting one. Funnily enough, because sort of Jackie Chan obviously emerged more than the the sort of 80s, so late 70s, early 80s, but he was very much a a, a sort of product of this of of uh, this sort of time and the and the their studios and this style of the film they're making. Um but you're right he did he he, he brought in those uh, uh the sort of comedy elements there the slapstick like you say sort of Keaton um their chaplain and uh you know evolved them and obviously in sort of film as well they changed during the uh, they sort of 80s, so things became a bit more uh, uh, they're sort of glossy and things like that, you know, like uh, um, you know, video had a had a big influence, you know, pop videos and all kinds of things. So, uh, you know, you know, different styles coming in, and you know, he really he he really sort of cemented himself in that in that period. Yeah, you know, they're an icon yeah. as well. Yeah, yeah. absolutely. I mean, lucky in a sense that we went that way and we didn't go the way that Hammer Films tried to take it with the I'd, the Seven Golden Vampire or whatever it is. I'd say, yeah, it's uh, it's an interesting one and fair play to play the Hammer for for their doing it. Yeah. They it, gave it a try. I mean, yeah, yeah, they, yeah, they did, but um, yeah, uh -huh, not yeah, not one of their best, but um, yeah. They were, they were missing a really good fight sequence there with Christopher Lee trying to do some of those moves. I mean, to be fair, Lee probably would have, you know, he he probably would have given given it them all. Um, they sort of cushioned maybe not so much. So um, yeah, yeah, maybe not not quite work as well. But uh, yeah, it's a, that's still a fun film though. It still is. Hey, this is Chris from Podtastic Audio, the show that I have created to help you create your amazing podcast. And you are listening to Pods Like Us. Hey, this is Ross. Simon. And Thomas. From Who Takes the Socks Off podcast, the show that answers the questions you didn't even know you needed the answers to. You're listening to Marv, the one-man podcasting machine. On Pods Like Us. Have we mentioned what your inspiration was then? It was, wasn't it? Just you were thinking, well, I want to do a show about film and about going into the minutiae of it. Is that what it well, is? Well, it was about, well, it was about very much so I was, you know, listening, listening there to other films or podcasts or TV podcasts and thinking, I need to, I need to find something that's, that's uh, different, that's going to stick out. Um, because there's thousands out there. There's, there's thousands of podcasts covered in, you know, films and their TV. And there's a lot, and no disrespect to anyone at all, but there's a lot of podcasts that have very similar formats or they cover, dare I say it, the same films, you know, there's a lot, you know, yeah. like if you want a, if you want a podcast on, you know, Die Hard or... um you know, you could probably name any any sort of eighties film or or any big sort of horror film or anything like that. You'll find, you know, countless examples. And I've and I've done some very popular and big films there myself. But yeah. it was about finding a way to cover things, you know, you know, differently, and um, and also thinking, well, what would be the kind of show that if I was, you know, listening, what would actually catch my um, uh, their sort of attention and. Uh, so that's why I came up with a format, and it's basically for the for the main show. So it is it is having having a a, a, a um their guest on, and we will 
talk about three films or or three shows or say say three three sort of episodes of a of a TV show or something yeah. like that. And um, you know, there are there are links in them. So um, you know, and links can be quite obvious. It could be uh, you know, genre or sort of actor, um, their director, and then some of them are are, are more obscure or, or quite fun as well. So there's some fun links to find three films that are are um like they're sort of connected in some way. Um yeah, and 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 like you say, there's some there's some odd ones out there, there's some odd links between films, so which is which is fun as well. Yeah, uh, I mean, I mean, a really I'm not sure if this is a weird link or not, but uh, Minority Report and Vanilla Sky were both made at the same time, and you've got uh, in Minority Report, you've actually got uh, Cameron Diaz and uh, the director of Vanilla, no, yeah, the director of Vanilla Sky, Cameron Crow. Both mm-hmm. of those two are actually on a bus just in the background in Minority Report. So, oh, okay, yeah. <laughs> yeah. So because they were both made at the same time and so yeah. they came on set or they were there with, with crews at the time and it was just like, oh, just go and sit in there. It'd be an interesting yeah. Easter egg to have. Yeah, so exactly, Marv, exactly. Stuff like that. So so as an example from my show, so um, I did an episode with, um, I got, I got, um, the, they're the two hosts from um, their Spy Hards podcast. So, so they came on and um, um, they actually did, they approached me with with this one. So there's a prop. So there is a prop that that um, appears in um, one of our dinosaurs is um, they're missing. Yeah. They're the first Star Wars film and um, they're Paddington. So there's a prop right. that appears in all three films, and that's what links the three films up. So, um, so you know, you know, quirky things like that. Um, it's yeah, uh-huh. more more of that, please. But that's the kind of stuff I love. It's it's and it's and it's you know different. Gets us talking about about three very different films, but um, yeah, it's good. It's good. I love it. I love all that. I love all that. It's like props from Doctor Who suddenly appearing in other science fiction films or television shows. And Jerry Anderson, famously, some of their crop props just reappear all over the place. Yeah, aha, uh-huh. I do, I do. Yeah, so I'm sure, um, I'm sure actually in 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 their seventies Doctor Who, I think there is a few Anderson models that actually do turn up that have been, you know, you know, you know, maybe chopped in half and sort of turned round and. And all kinds of different stuff. Um, like they're sort of computer banks, so big, uh, big banks of uh, uh, you know flashing lights and things like that. They'll they will turn up ev- everywhere. And I think I think uh, Irwin, the Alan, the uh, they're the film and the TV, um, uh, they're sort of producer yeah. from from the the sixties and the seventies. He, he 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 used to love and. Uh, they recycle things uh, through their his his their shows and it's uh, yeah and if you're eagle eyed you can spot them as well you can spot uh, you know bits that turn up you know in all kinds of places. Well, the the robot in Lost in Space isn't is he the same robot that was in um, Forbidden Planet? Um, now, uh, I I'm not quite sure if the. the the Lost in Space robot is in it is in something else. Whether it is Forbidden Planet, I'm not entirely. Is in sure. is in an Adams Family episode. Okay, it's right. It turns for some reason. Well. I've seen that yeah. on 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 somewhere. Yeah. yeah. Uh huh. But yeah, yeah, just yeah, reusing stuff like that. Uh, or like in sort of seventies, uh, like their sort of cop shows or, or or sort of dramas and things like that, and certain. Uh, um, like their sort of cars they turn up in in their different shows, so they will be the same same their car that's obviously leased by by a company, and they turn up in lots of different shows and things like that. Yeah, yeah. it's great stuff. And then, and then another connection you've got, which which would probably I'm surprised Cam and Scott they probably have mentioned this, but you've got George Lazenby in the um, 
in the Aston DB5 in uh, in the the film The Return of the Man from Uncle. Ah, uh-huh. yes, yeah, uh-huh. exactly, yeah, yeah, yeah. You know what, Marv? I think you should write some of my stuff. I think, uh, I, I, you know, some of the stuff that you're getting here is uh, yeah, it's worthy of an episode or two. So, all these things I've got in my head for no reason whatsoever. <laughs> They're just stuck there. <laughs> but that. And that and that's an interesting thing, and that and that's the kind of thing that I latch on on there to and has always has always uh you know you know piqued my 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 sort of in in the interest there, Marv, is, is these things. I love all that and uh and and thankfully it shows that other people, you know, you know, love it as well. And uh, you know, and it's a great it's it's a great mix. Um and yeah, uh-huh. and I just like, I just I just like to be slightly different. So yeah, but I, I mean, going going to that that again, you know, about the Star Wars being inspired by the Japanese uh, hidden folk fortress. Mm-hmm. Um, yeah, you know, uh, I'm going to another one here. So originally, uh, George Lucas wanted to Shiro Mifun from the old Kurosawa Kurosawa films. He yes, wanted him uh-huh. to play Obi Wan Kenobi. Yeah in Star Wars originally, and it ended up going to Alec Guinness. Uh, and that would have, I don't know, would that have made it a bit too obvious that it was based on Idem Fortress and that, because he's using the same actor, sort of? Um, Probably for the... Uh, well, I mean, what we do know with Star Wars was it, it was a huge success. So yep. um, it got... It got audiences in. It got it got a younger audience in. Um, you know, huge worldwide uh, uh, their success. So I think actually for for the majority of people who who would see it, they wouldn't look at that. They wouldn't think that. No. You know, because they wouldn't have seen Hidden Forest, so they, no. so they wouldn't make that um uh, their sort of connection there. And um, and actually, I don't think that. That really makes a huge sort of difference. Like, um, you know, you know, many of our favourite actors going back are cast in very similar roles. You know, they do very similar films. Um, you know, you know, you might say that they are tight cast, but that doesn't stop people. You know, like let's say, you know, let's look at Liam, uh, uh, this or Neeson and his and his later <laughs> work. Yeah. So as yeah. so as films from from the last sort of fifteen years now. Uh, you know, taken and and lots of other films like like that. He's 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 got himself a nice a nicer niche as as the older the sort of killer. You know, the older hard man, the the action hero yeah. who is who is getting on, but he's got he's got skills and he's got um like their sort of motives and things like that. And um, you know, no one cares. You know, no. no one really cares that they're the same film every every six months. You know, we go and watch them, and so yeah, yeah, why not? Ethan, for instance, you know, I can't tell the difference between the transporter films, and there's another series of films that he makes, and I'm thinking, I'm pretty sure he's the same character in all of those films. Oh yeah, he fairly much is. Yeah, yeah. So sort of, yeah. Statham basically is, yeah, the same in practically all of his films. Yeah. Okay. yeah. I'm not. I'm going to, not going to knock anybody for that. I mean, you know, there's plenty of comedy actors who play the same characters in every film with a different character name. Yeah, yeah. Jack Black. And... <laughs> Quite exactly. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah. Jack Black plays Jack Black. Does does a very good job of it. Yeah, yeah. And then and and you kind of know what what you're going to get with them as well. So. Um... And and that's what filmmakers like as well. You know, they like that. You know, if you cast Jack Black, you know what you're going to get. You know, audiences know what they're going to get. Um, and um, and that's okay. It's all right for that. You know, because there's plenty of other different films. You know, if you don't like that, then you know, you know, you know, go and watch something else. You know, don't really criticize. No. You know, people who do. Um, like the discourse at the moment, you know, superhero films and oh god, there's so many superhero films and and blah blah blah. Yeah. Well, don't watch them. Don't yeah. watch them. Don't right. talk about them. Just ignore them. You know, because 
you know, you know, lots of people do like them and they are watching them. So, you know, you know, just get on with it. <laughs> yeah, go and watch something you do want to watch. Exactly. Yeah. Hello, everybody. This is Ryan. This is Avery. And we are from the Frame by Frame King Crimson podcast. And you are listening to Pods Like Us. Hey, this is Jeff Cummings from the Best Song Podcast, the show that is telling the stories of every song nominated for the Academy Award. You're listening to Pods Like Us. Show history. When, when did you get the show started then? And, uh, and also, what was it like at the beginning being able to get guests? Was that sort of easy or, and how did you do it? So I, um, yeah, so show his, history, we're actually coming up to, to the third birthday. So, um, so it will be three years, I think at the end of January or the start of February anyway. So round about, round, round about then, so not far away. And um, it's interesting because I was supported by someone. So um, um, Daniel, um the the Clifford who has been on my show as a guest a few times yep. um had said to me and we were chatting sort of prior to it and I was saying well, well look I'm gonna launch the show um and and Daniel very kindly came on as as a guest sort of twice early, early on and um but what he said to me is I like, just have a have have a plan in your head that you're just gonna make a very short their season to so say you know six episodes or or eight episodes so 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 just have that in your head plan for that you know reach out you know get your guests plan out what you're gonna do um and then after those eight then you can you know have a look and say well you know what will I do now how will I plan it out etc yeah. um so that's what I did I did it like that and uh, and it was hard um getting getting guests originally but then it's but then from that it is it it has expanded so so you have sort of regulars um and they kind of change a little bit as things sort of go on so you might notice there's some there's some regulars in the first year yeah. and then and then there's some other regulars in the second and and then maybe a few others in in in, in my third year are doing it um and that has expanded but also they you reach and you know people want them to actually come on so um and looking at different angles as well and actually reaching out to um uh, they sort of authors authors are always really good so if someone's got a book about about their film or about yeah. a, 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 a their actor or a, a, a their tv show they're always willing there to come on and you know, talk about about the book, and also, and we'll pick three things. You know, so so maybe three films from an actor or or a director. Um, so sort of authors, uh, they 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 academics as well. So so ac- academics make great guests. Yeah. You know, they are they are knowledgeable and they are they they're eloquent as well, and they have. Um, and they tend to have um, uh, their sort of niches that they really want there to talk about. So, um, so that's a great uh, uh, their sort of resource. So it's it's actually just kind of tapping in with with those. But it's definitely changed as it's as it's gone on. Yep. Yeah, the writers. That's that's an interesting one because so um, I'm going to give away a bit of a secret here. So okay. one of the other podcasts that I do, one of the Beatles ones, we had a guest on there, and it's the first time we've had a guest on that show. Um, that's about the charts of the sixties, essentially, and we had this person on there, and he was talking about um, the charts in Canada and the similarity between, or it's sort of like almost a cross between what you had in the British charts and in the American charts. So they were getting the Beatles before America did because they were okay. influenced by you know English because uh, of it being, you know, English colony and everything. So um, we had him on as a guest and because of his knowledge, they were all able to just back and forth, the two co-hosts, and he just carried on talking. I think there was one bit where he talked for about seven minutes 
without anybody we just let they just let him go essentially yeah, yeah. and only my two colleagues or only the person that was controlling the call one of my colleagues co-host only he knew that i actually my signal disappeared completely <laughs> and i had to reboot the broadband back up again yeah and they didn't even realize during that six or seven minutes that he talked that i'd been knocked off and come back on again <laughs> well and was he worth it was his was his his was knowledge his was incredible sc- yeah yeah. Oh, so, yeah yeah when you get somebody that writes about a subject and you bring them on to talk about that subject you've hit that mark where you know you can just almost pull the cord and let them just go and do the thing yeah yeah yeah, yeah definitely and then and they make for great episodes and uh and that's it and they will they will enhance your show um you know and some of my some of my best episodes are definitely with uh, uh their sort of writers and uh you know they sort of academics and things like that they do bring a, a certain something yeah that's why I've always said as well, one of my suggestions, I mean, this is a lot earlier for this, and normally I ask other people, ask the guests for the advice for podcasters, but that's why I've always said that one piece of advice for podcasters is if you're thinking of starting one, start one on a subject that you love, because then you're going to just be really happy every time that you come to record, it, you'll be hitting something that you want to be doing. If it's something that you're just doing because you're following a fad, and you're mind, mind, minorly interested and you're just trying to follow a fad, you might yeah. get irritated with it. But if it's something that you absolutely love and it's a part of your life, then that you will make something that is good. Yeah, yeah, definitely. And I think of, um, I mean, for me, I've got very broad scope, so I will do, you know, just about anything. You know, sort of genre wise, I've you know probably touched on on most sort of genres, or or I'm trying there to get the corners of the globe, and you know I'm trying to do as much um, you know world sort of cinema as I can as well, and touch on lots of different things. But you know, some of the best shows are very uh, like this sort of niche, like um, um, you know, like like the ones who will sort of dedicate themselves to a um, uh, uh, their TV series, um, and they will just you know cover that that their series, and uh, you know that's a fair fair play to them, you know, because they're doing you know they are covering what what they love, and uh, and there's an audience out there for you know for these things as well, and uh, yeah, uh-huh. and sometimes I think to myself, oh, I'd I'd like to do a you know a, you know a such and such. Uh, they're sort of cast or whatever, but um, yeah, I'm going to stick with this one to be fair. So. To, be, to be fair, I mean, one one that you've already mentioned when you had the two uh, when you had Cam and Scott from Spy Yards, you know, as much as people might think that Spy Yards is a bit of a niche, you know, it's and oh. it's sort of like what's it? It isn't because yeah. you can see from the type of episodes that you've got, that they've got, you've got Enter the Dragon, which goes into the spy. Uh, category to a degree because yeah. Bruce Lee's character is at essentially a spy going mm-hmm. in there uh, and spying for the government. Yeah. Um, so you've got those. You've got Where Eagles Dare, which is a war film essentially, but it's got spy and agents in there. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So yeah. It's a big field. It's not as uh-huh. small. It's not just one person spying on this, that, and the other. It's everything else that goes with it. Yeah. So what I do know about uh, the the guys, so they do have a um, their master list of of their films that uh, that they can cover, um, but it's getting added to all of the time because there's so many different you know spy films coming along. Um, like I saw, I saw, I saw an advert actually for the for a box set. I think there's, I think there um, the three. Three spy films from uh, their sort of Japan from the early seventies, um, they which they didn't know about, so so they'd you know had no uh, no sort of information about it. But I was like, well, actually, look, you know, there's there's films for you, um, and I'm in there a group chat with them as well, and people are always finding stuff, and 
So, so unfortunately, their list is getting bigger and bigger and bigger because there's yeah, I've done the so same many with films them. out there. Yeah. yeah, yeah, I've done the same with them. Where I've said, "Oh, when are you doing this film?" You know, as a private chat, private discussion. You know, not on the yeah. main thing on yeah. Instagram chat or sort of. Oh, when are you doing this film? And then <laughs> uh, I think Instagram is Scott that controls the Instagram account. Yeah, uh-huh. and and Scott got back to me and he goes, "I didn't know about this, Marv," and then. And then they'd be like, dot, 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 thanks. <laughs> <laughs> and I know that's sort of like, we thought we'd got them all, and now there's another one. Yeah. Well, I was very fortunate, and, uh, you know, the guys are great, and they were and they were very lovely, and they invited me on, because I kind of nagged them a little bit. So um, they, they Jason, um, they're born, of course, uh, you know, spy their character, yeah. and, 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 you know, you know, four, four slash five great films um, about the Jason Bourne, but um, you know, one of the things that I love is actually the um, the the original screen they're born is of course Richard, um, Richard Chamberlain. Chamberlain. Yeah, yeah, aha. Uh-huh. Um, and I was nagging them for ages to, to to cover that, and they they did invite me on, um, and we did that, and it was it was great. It's so. cool. Hey, it's Rena, host of the Better Call Daddy Show, a show for daddy's girls, inspirational fathers, and a little bit of daddy drama. And you're listening to Pods Like Us. This is Mac Jackson from the Forever Adventure Network, the home of the MacGyver podcast, the Never Gets Old podcast, and the MacGyver SG-1 audio series. And you're listening to Pods Like Us. What sort of research do you do then leading up to the show? I'm guessing it's watching the films or the TV shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, and then what sort of research do you do into them other than that to get your your, your facts? And what sort of research do you do on the guest? Um, so the guest, well, so the, so, the, so the guest, so like you say, you build up a, 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 a network. So you, so you have your network. Uh, going and very much for the show it is a different guest every week, um, but there are regulars, um, so it very much sort of depends on on maybe the tone of the episode or the style that you have. So um, I do have some other podcast friends who who come on on a regular basis, and those episodes might be a, a bit more lighthearted. So we might pick films that uh, we can have a bit more of a of a of a of a banter about as it were yep. um you know or 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 knowingly pick things that actually aren't that good and we can sort of dissect them a bit more <laughs> maybe um yep. but again it's about you know getting there to know know the people who you have on and, and and you can actually do that really really quickly just you know a few sort of messages you know chat there beforehand what i would say with my format is it's quite it's quite sort of rigid in a way yeah. as in um so if i'm asking a a writer to come on i will say to them look you you pick me three films of of so and so um, you know, that's you know, you're the expert. You 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 give me three films that are a good um they sort of represent your notation of, of the person or the genre or whatever. Um and from that actually the I like I like the chat to feel organic. Um so I will do research. I will have notes, and we will sort of cover, um, you know, certain things while we are talking. But um, I like the the conversational feel of it. Um, it's not sort of too structured, but um, also I would say format and as a host, I'm very good at moving the the conversation forward now and uh, um, and making it seem very very smooth and. And quite quite um you know comfortable and uh you know homely in a way as well i like to think so anyway i hope i hope it comes across like that i try to do the same thing 
I, I yeah. try to make it sound natural and not forced. Yeah, yeah. Uh-huh. It was a bit more forced when I first started. I will say that. I will say I must admit, and this was and and this is something that I'm uh, um and I don't know about you, Mom. I don't know if like if you you know if like me and you study your downloads that I do, I do look at them. I look at them a lot. Um, um but it's when you know someone so that you've got a new regular listener, but they're going back to early episodes and you're like, oh no, oh no, I hope it doesn't put them off. <laughs> you know, because they're not as <laughs> You know, they're not as polished, they're not as smooth as, you know, they're the ones now. But um, one thing I'm very, very pleased about is that the format basically has not changed um, really okay. at all. So so my format, I had my format down pretty rigid from the, from the start. Um, it's just the, the sort of producing of it that has actually gotten better. Um, yeah, but uh, uh, so the format was always the. Um, I mean, d- did you always have these little individual episodes in the no. original plan as well, or no. is that something no. that's no. just come as a side project? A kind of a side project, yeah. So, and um, so like the main show, or, or what, or what it was called. So the main show was always a specific topic with the, with the with the three things yeah. every episode. So that's what the main episodes feature that's what they are about and then a couple of little strands from that so um they are are uh, they're sort of confessions um their episodes where where i finally get around to watching the either classic which i've never seen um and and we've all got that because we can't watch everything but there will be you know, films with big names, um, their reputations that we've never watched. Yeah. Um, and I was like, right, I must get around to that. So so there's some episodes of doing that. So that'll be a single film with with a guest, usually someone who, who loves this film. And and they're like, what? You've never watched? They're the shining there, dare I say it, Marvin. Mm-hmm. It took me 40 yeah. years to watch. Um, uh, but they're films like that. And then... I've done some TV, uh, their sort of review. So I've done like like the more recent, um, um, their Star Wars their series, mostly just because I like them and I like to talk about them. Um, but when it comes back, it always comes back to the main, the main format, which is which is a a a, a topic and and sort of three things about from that. From that topic so always go back to that but um it's it's my show yep. i've 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 tried launching them as as their spin-offs but i always bring them back to the uh they they to the feed because i'm just i'm just like that um you know and like you say it's my show and i can do what i like but but the main the main format is always yeah it's it's fairly much they're the same so Absolutely, it's good. So then, you recording and editing. Then, how do you do go about that? I I press record, uh, and if there's no technical arse ups um, af- after a press stop, uh, that's it. Fairly much done. Um, I will edit out uh, their sort of bloopers and things like that. So if there's a, you know technical uh, um, uh, their sort of mistakes and things, they will get edited. But generally, the the conversation is as it is. Um, there's another reason for that, Marvin. This is a more personal reason, and um, uh, you might not pick up on it. A lot of people don't. But um, as a as a child, and they're growing up, and and to this day, um, verbal fluency is something that I've had challenges with and had to overcome. And um, I, I, I stammer. I, I stammer a lot. Um, okay. um, it's very well managed now. It's something that I, that, that I, I, I manage really well. But um, it still comes across every now and then. There will be there will be pauses in my in my speech. There will be some there gaps every now and then as I'm 
as I'm working there to get my words out, and that's uh, um, and and that can be hard some some of the times. And sometimes I listen back to myself, and I'm like, oh, I could hear, I could hear things that other people can't in my voice. Um, yeah. uh, and I could actually polish a lot of that up. I could cut bits out, and uh, but but no, I don't do it. Um, and I'm not going to do it because that's that's not right. So um, there is that as well, and that's a and that's a personal thing. I used to cut those bits out when I first started, and then I felt like it was a bit almost robotic when I did do that. So I stopped. I stopped doing that, and I, I just listen now to make sure that the conversation yeah, flows like... and it sounds good. Really. Yeah, yeah, and as and as well, Marv, it's it's about how we talk. It is about. How we how how we speak normally, what our conversations are like. So, um, and and you do hear it every so often in in the day of the podcast world, and you will hear other podcasters, and they say that they will edit it out every time someone goes er or um, um, and I'd be there forever if I was doing that. I'm not. I'm not doing that. Great. No, it's not. It's not happening, and it's not natural. No. I mean, I know I can see why people want to be as smooth and polished as they can, but that's not for me. Thanks very much. So, so yeah. So editing only if things go drastically wrong is there is there a lot of editing in the show? <laughs> yep. Stops for the toilet. They go out. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> when when the the cat wakes up and it makes a noise in the background, then yeah. Or when a delivery comes that you're not expecting at that time and you suddenly get a knock on the door. <laughs> exactly, exactly. You know, I've had that before as well. Yeah. <laughs> I've actually been waiting all day for a delivery, but it's not come yet. Um, uh, wonderful. So welcome to And Volume for All, a deeply reverent and lovingly irreverent exploration of the history, philosophy, and future of the greatest music in the world, heavy metal. I am your cinnamon host, Crunch, I guess, Quinn. Hey, this is Greg at Bad Counsel. You want some good counsel? Keep listening to Pods Like Us with Marv and Down with Monarchy. <laughs> Music and logo of the show. Uh-huh. Um, so logo, so, so, the, so the logo's been there right from the start. Um, my friend... Um, the the Chris who um, is a guest as well. He's he is an occasional guest. He uh, he has a um, he is an animator and he does uh, uh, this sort of graphics uh, and he's worked on a few a few things that, that you might have seen in your time um, and um, and I nagged him and he and he did my logo. Um, they kind of they're the they reluctantly, but uh, um, and I and I don't really go in for uh, I don't really go in for episode artwork or anything like that. So yeah. the my logo is my logo. There it is. Uh, I like just just to keep things plain and simple. I music I have changed, so I have changed that a couple of times now. Um, and someone actually wrote me some of their music. So my current music, someone wrote it for me. So Josh um there Wilson who 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 does the um they're they're super familiar with the the Wilson's podcast. He he wrote my their theme theme their music at the moment. So I am very grateful there to him. That's great. Um I mean I mean the logo, I d I don't hmm. I have done it where I've put like the logo of the i mean mine it's got like a dark space in the bottom corner mm -hmm. where i can quite easily just put that person the the guest whoever the guest is what their show is i'll just put that in the corner occasionally well that yeah uh -huh. i mean then that would make sense for you marv yeah uh -huh. yeah but yeah. Th these shows where their artwork their logo isn't there when you when you search through in, in essence, because I, I listen to so many podcasts, and if I'm going through my feed and I'm looking for, oh, I want the next episode of this, yeah. in some ways I'm looking for the artwork because I've, I'm have i subscribed to nearly 500 different shows. 
essentially. <laughs> so do you know what I mean? It's a bit of a yeah, yeah, uh-huh. yeah. So there's a familiarity to to logos. I can understand people changing them specifically for the subject. If it's like a history show, oh, we'll have a picture that shows what this subject is. But at the same yeah. time, it's not their show art. So if somebody's just flicking trying to find that show, they might flick past it by accident. Yeah, oh, yeah, yeah. I don't, I don't, and and actually, Marv, I don't really know how to do stuff like that. So, so, so it doesn't get done. Um, it's as simple as that. <laughs> In fact, I'm surprised I even make a podcast. It is a miracle <laughs> that anything goes out. It really is. Um, but there you go. So here we go then. Uh, I, I picked up on this because of having listened to these episodes recently. Uh, this one that I've got for a bit of a talking point. Um, I mean, Ian's go-tos or go-to for Asian cinema. Uh, I don't know, one or three films that you would go to that, that you think would be a good introduction to Asian cinema to people. Oh, gosh, Asian cinema. So, OK, let's... Um, oh, God, you really put me on the spot there, Marv. Now, uh, I've, I've got three, yeah. Have you got three? Okay. Um, I will go for... Uh, um, this would just be pers- pers- personal favourites, I suppose. Um, as a as a more arty film, I would go for um, uh, Women of the Dunes. Um, yeah. Yeah, yeah, which is a nice... I like that film a lot, Tony. Um, very captivating. Um, Fantastic drama. Yeah. I will gosh do a picker. They, they they do a picker monster film or, or or a crime film or oh I, w- I would say for a cult film I'm going to go for and this is this has been a very popular uh, their subject matter for me but I'm going to go for um, female prisoner scorpion so the first uh, the first film in that series um, which is a, a great blend of sort of prison drama horror revenge crime um a bit supernatural type stuff just uh yeah great film wonderful film um the mako um the kaji is a is a a brilliant actress and yeah that's a yeah that's a super film um and then, and then, actually, I will go for one of the Shaw Brothers films, and I think I will. Uh, oh gosh, I think I'll, I'll actually go for um, the the Crippled Avengers, um, which again is one of those films that showcases the um, the the technical skill of of the the choreography, um, and makes a big play of. Um, it ends up with different styles because the um, the the protagonists are uh, uh, they're sort of disabled in some way, so they have they have injuries, they have their disabilities that they have to over- overcome, uh, and their fighting styles they represent that, and it's and it's it's done in a, a really great way. So I will I will pick those. You know, you picked yours, and you're making me think that my picks. I'm I'm slightly tempted to actually change one of them and go go for, <laughs> go, go for the original Godzilla film. Well, that you know, came well, out because that's oh, the beginning of them. Well, I've got I've got I've got the I've got the Criterion box set. Yeah. Of um, and that's a fantastic box set. And I was thinking of doing the the Godzilla films in in the, the same way as I did the the Shaw Brothers films. Um. And I, I will probably still do that at some some near point, but that uh, is a big subject. Yeah, but it's but yeah, yeah. First Godzilla is a, it's a great film. Yeah, yeah. And it does it kicks off. I think as well for actually launching Japanese cult cinema worldwide yeah. and bringing people in and finding all these other great films. Um, yeah, yeah. It's a trailblazer, definitely. Yeah. Um, as a way into uh, the films of Bruce Lee, I mean, it's a bit of an obvious one. I might go for Enter the Dragon because it's a really good mix of the 
of you know the the western and the eastern films which i don't like using those i think it works perfectly as the, those two different studios working together to bring yeah. a really good product and it shows you what the things that were special about bruce lee and it's a good introduction to then go back and watch other bruce lees before that although i would say from personal taste, if you are going to go and do a deep dive after that, um, is it Way of the Dragon that's based in Rome? Mm -hmm. Where it goes to Rome? Watch that in the original with subtitles. Do yeah. not watch it dubbed because the jokes do not work when it's dubbed. Like when he goes into the, uh, the restaurant in Rome and he's asking for eggs, essentially, and because it's all dubbed into English, you don't get the original because in the original without the dubs, he's speaking in Chinese and the waitress is speaking into him in, in Italian. Mm -hmm. So, and the joke is that he's going eggs in that and he's, he's try he's saying it in his language and they're trying to understand him or he's trying to say it actually in Roman and he can't in, in Italian, he can't quite get the pronunciation right. And that's the joke is that he's not quite got the, the pronunciation right and she can't understand it. But because they put it, they, they overdub it, everything into English, people watch that <laughs> bit and it's like, why is that funny? What on earth is this? Yeah. What is that? But you miss the joke there in that. Yeah. Um, and probably as a third one, oh, I feel bad because there's some really good uh, Indian films as well that I could have could have picked. Yeah, I haven't um, even touched on that yet. Yeah. But, you know... Um, I'm still going to say of relatively recent over the last 25 years, I still think that Crouching Tiger is a beautiful film. Mm, yeah, yeah. Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon, the filmmaking on it is astounding and the, 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 the actual backgrounds and the, 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 you know, external shots and a beautiful country. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. I know. I know. And and you know what? If you ask me there there tomorrow, I could probably, you know, pick you three 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 different films. And for you, Marv, you're probably the same. You know, it's uh, you know, there's so much out out there. Um, in a way, what's sad is that we'll never ever watch watch them all either. Mm -hmm. There's there'll always be something that we've mm -hmm. you know that we've missed out on. But yeah, I mean, I mean, tomorrow, I'm, tomorrow, you ask me tomorrow, I might say, oh, um, I don't know, Mongol. Um, hero, um, or even the one, yeah, yeah, uh -huh. exactly. Yeah. <laughs> it's a huge thing. Hey, I'm Mr. X, and I'm Caleb of the Mac, the Mac Rat Rat podcast. podcast, and you're listening to Pods Like Us with Marv. Here's you, Marv. Hey, this is Danny from One Minute Podcast Tips, the show that helps you be a better podcaster in just a minute a week. And you're listening to Pods Like Us. What episodes of your show do you think stand out for you personally or people would would be good going into? Um, ooh, good, good. I suppose... Ooh. It's an interesting one because it... it it would depend what you like very much. So, so there would be ones I would maybe recommend if you're a sci-fi fan, or or a horror fan, or um, there's actually probably episodes I would recommend because the the guest is really great. they regardless of of what the of of what we're talking about is. So, um, I will see. I will see. Actually, if you're a, if if you're a sci-fi and a horror fan, and a very early episode was um, was um, called "Who Goes There," which is about um, about about the novel called "Who Goes There," which was adapted many times, um, and it's best known as uh, as 1982's um, "The Thing." Yeah, but there's lots of other versions out there, so um, there are um, there are at least five sort of screen versions of it um and and we talk about the three different ones so that's a good one um horror i've done a lot of horror 
Um, it's my favourite carpenter, by the way. I really the thing. Too. Yeah, yeah, it's a great film. It's a super film. Um, I haven't actually covered the, the thing itself. That's the trouble. I've only covered the other versions, okay. not that one. <laughs> but um, um, horror films, uh, my um, I covered um, the 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 Friday the Thirteenth. I covered I covered parts four, five, and six, which actually link up um, there together. Um, so there is there is a character, there is a return in their character in all in, in all three of those uh, films. Um, who's not um, not Jason? Jason, yeah, 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 who's not Jason? So, yeah. uh, so that's a good one. That's a good fun episode. Um, Guest wise, I've had I've had the wonderful um, um, the Kevin John um, the Davies who um, started life as an animator. Yeah. And he worked on um, the the Hitchhiker's Guide, the TV series, um, the Blake Seven, the Terror Hawks. I did some films, worked on um, the Who Framed Roger Rabbit. Um, it, they're producing, did some um, um, their documentaries. Um, knew Douglas Adams really well, was a good friend of the Douglas Adams. Um, and he has actually um, edited a book recently um, called 42, um, all about the Douglas Adams. And he yeah. got access yeah. to the Douglas's archive in um, the C- Cambridge. I, I wanted to say it's Cambridge. Oh, I hope it's Cambridge. So we got access to that and uh, made the, 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 the book. And Kevin's been on a few times talking about his work. Uh, and and the Douglas Adams and lots of other things. Kevin's full of the best anecdotes about the Doctor Who and Blake Seven and all yeah. kinds of stuff. It's full of great stories. Uh, he's a great a great guest. So um, yeah yeah check those out because uh, you know and Kevin likes to talk. Yeah, he loves to talk. He loves to tell his his, his uh, uh, their stories. So yeah. Yeah, they're, they're yeah. good ones as well. Yeah. When you get guests like that, you know, it, it, it's magic to listen to as well. It's great to listen to because, for instance, um, shout out to the Jerry Anderson podcast that Jerry's son is one of the presenters of. They mm-hmm. had the actor uh, Prentice Hancock oh, on there oh, recently. I would, love, I would love to have the Prentice on. And sure. Prentice, <laughs> he's all over the shop in British television and cinema from the 60s and the 70s. Yeah, uh-huh. he certainly is, yeah. Oh, that is that is so uncanny. I actually grew a moustache one. So me and my friends, yeah. um, we had... Um, so, 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 so within my friends, they, they, they grew with sort of Doctor Who... Uh, uh, sort of circle that I have, yeah. you know, and we've known each other there forever now. But um, anyway, as a joke, we had a uh, we had a, a grow your own um, the apprentice Hancock style, uh, <laughs> uh, their moustache. Yeah. Um, so I did actually grow a moustache there to look a bit like the apprentice Hancock. I, I, I believe I actually won that. Um, yeah, I had the the the, the best. Um, the moustache, but you're absolutely right. Prentice has been in everything. Um, yeah, I would imagine he was absolutely brilliant. Yeah. So he's, he's he had stories or anecdotes about obviously Space 1999 because he was one of the main mm-hmm. characters in that. Yeah, uh, the protectors is in the protectors. Uh, I think he was in the champions, he was mm-hmm. in uh, Blake Seven, he's Blake uh, Seven, he's in Survivors, yes, he's in the yeah. Sweeney, yeah. Yeah, he's in. Yeah, he's. I think he's done probably like, the professionals. I think he 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 did four or five their Doctor Who's in the seventies. So yeah, he's he's been around. And another another connection there is that uh, Jerry Anderson's son Jamie has been involved with Doctor Who. By the way, if anybody's interested, mm-hmm. he's, he's he's produced. He's produced. Uh, he, he he's one of the official producers, and he directs the audio dramas. That you know that the the old doctors come back and they do the audio dramas with big finish, the big finish ones. Yeah. yeah. So so he does those. But there's an interesting story yeah, there where he says about stuff, yeah. 
he says an interesting story about his dad used to, he was sort of disappointed because, uh, you know, his dad wanted him to be sort of into this, that and the other. And, and his dad was saying in this interview that they played this clip and his dad said, oh, no, he just, want, he just wants to, when I go to these events, he says, he just wants to go and go to the, go to the stand that's about Doctor Who. <laughs> yeah. Uh, which is funny uh, yeah now that would have been a crossover that 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 could have yeah. been a great one yeah uh -huh. shout out to jamie you need to get thunderbirds or or captain scarlet into doctor who that's interesting who who would who would cross over who would be a good sort of they're a crossover character yeah mm -hmm. mm, interesting mm. Pods like us at gmail.com with any answers and I'll forward them to Jamie. <laughs> oh, dear. So what advice would you give to people starting their own podcast then, Ian? Um, what I would say, and, I'm, I've, I, and, I've, and I've kind of already said this, but what I would say is to, is to have a good think about, about your format and about what you want to cover um, you know, before actually starting out, have a good idea about that. Um, you know, you know, do a bit of research, do a bit of groundwork. Um, however, saying that, it's a podcast, so you can do whatever you absolutely want to do as well. So yeah. actually don't let anyone tell you what you can't do. Um, but do have a good think about, and as you said, Marv, about what you would like to do. You know what? You know what? You know what does really take take your fancy? What are you? You know? You know? Uh, they they're passionate about, and um, you know, really go for that, or or pick something that uh, you know, or 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 actually, if you're if if you're a fan of of a TV show, and even if it's a limited one, even if there's not that many episodes, you can do that and get finished, and it's there. Yeah. You know, and it's there for people to find, and uh, you know. So, actually, do what the hell you want, because because that's what we can do. Somebody needs to do a uh, podcast if there isn't one out there already about Firefly. Oh, there's there must be Firefly. Sure, there must be one. There must because be, that was yeah. limited. Yeah, I think I, actually, I think there is. I think there is a. I think there is a podcast. Um, that does do short-lived their series. Um, and, yeah, and they have done Firefly. I'm trying to remember the name of them. Um, it's not coming in, in the med, but it is out there, so I do know that it is out there. I need, I need to know that one and listen to that and then get in touch <laughs> with them. Speaking yeah. of podcasts, what do you like to listen to yourself? Um, there's one, to I... If you end up with... Um, um, you know what, Marvin, and, and, and you might be the same, although I know for your show actually involves listening to lots of different podcasts, so, yeah. you know, which is great. But I think I think you do get favourites. You know, you absolutely do. Yeah. Um, I like, um, I really like, um, there, there's, um, there, there is one which has a, a sweary word in it's the title, but um, what the F do you want? Um, which is a weekly podcast. It's a half hour uh, their podcast and uh, um, hosted by um, their their punk who is a, a sweary, um, their Northern Irish man, and he has has a guest on every week, and he basically asks them what the f do they want, um, and then they talk over what or whatever uh, their sort of topic is. That they have have they brought, but it's uh, it's half an hour. It's it's good fun. It makes me laugh, um, and and actually I listen about stuff that I wouldn't I wouldn't I wouldn't sort of do like you know games and things. I mean I'm not a you know I'm not a gaming person. I don't yeah. you know I don't do any of that. But I will listen to them if 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 they're doing that stuff. So um, I do I do enjoy that. Um, I do really like, and they've just come back. So uh, when when ITC entertained the world, uh, that's a great podcast. 
Yeah. Um, yeah. Uh -huh. So, uh, the, so they're the three hosts there are covering them. Uh, they're the shows of ITC from from the sixties and seventies. That's in um, that's in my list actually, waiting to be listened to. Good. Well, that's yeah. an excellent that's an excellent podcast. You know, three guys who who really know their stuff, and I was. Um, I was fortunate enough to have one of them on my show to do um, the Persuaders, um, oh, yeah. which is, um, dare I say it, my most popular episode ever. Cool. Um, far outstrips every other one. Um, not by that far. There's a few who are, there's a few other episodes that are close to it, but um, that is a really pop popular one and. Um, uh, uh, jazz, um, their wiseman, there came on, and uh, and he was, he was, he was, he was really good. He was really good. Um, the podcast I listen to the most, however, I listen to this. Um, they're religiously, um, and uh, I love them. They they to bits. That is vintage. Um, their video, so that is a um, American. Their podcast, so it's three people in um, their California. And so far, they have covered um, every major film release um, in the US from from 1980. They have just finished 1981. They are just starting 1982. Um, it's a mammoth their task, um, but they have done all those films. It's a great format. Um, their Patrick, who was one of the hosts, has been on my show. Uh, they're they're a good few times. He's a lovely bloke. They're, they're, the show is is so good, and uh, I would they recommend that. So please do go out and find that one. And they will have covered a film that you like because I've done so many. There will be a handful that of of their films that you think, oh yeah, I can I can listen to that. So, so they're, they're watching every film from 1980 onwards. So basically, yep. Yeah. So it's every film that had a. A, a a a wide release in in the the states so so in the the states so so there are a few titles that are missed that we would know you know sort of European films or 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 their sort of British films but basically yeah every every major film every every every, every film that got a sort of nationwide uh, their sort of release they have covered so far yeah. They've they've just kicked off 1982. So, well, you you know, to be a bit self self promoting here, I'm um I don't know if you you might be interested in this. Uh, me and Sean, Sean who does review it yourself, mm -hmm. we've been in discussion because we're going to. Uh, he's been trying to get me to be on his show a bit. Okay. More, more than I have been. Uh -huh. Um. So we're looking. He's looking at a subject that interests me, and. I've already suggested to him, and he's bought them, I think. Uh, so we are going to talk about films like, we're going to talk about the Titfield Thunderbolt. I think okay, that's the first yeah. one we're going to talk about. Yeah, yeah. And then oh. and then after that, we're going to do I'm All Right, Jack. And my idea with that with him is, they're essentially films that are about social change, in a sense. Yeah. Yeah, because uh -huh. Tipfield Thunderbolt is about the change from the you know the small rail railway companies that you had mm -hmm. back in the day, the, the the smaller ones, branch lines, yeah. for instance, and how it changed into the big industry that it became. And then I'm more right, Jack, is about the 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 rise of the you know um, uh, uh, yeah the the unions and things mm -hmm. like that. And it's yeah. about yeah. that. So that's the sort of way that we're looking at it. So there you go. That. Right. Yeah, which I'm that's just interested in, mm -hmm. not going into yeah. a political side of it, but yeah, yeah, yeah. Mm -hmm. That'll be good. Oh well, I'll, I'll look forward to that. I'll, I do listen to Sean's show every, every now and then, so yeah, uh -huh. yeah, that'll be good. Sh Sean's voice, it's 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 podcasting brilliance. <laughs> he's from he's from there, the north of England, so you know he's from. Um, uh, they're the northeast, so yeah, yeah, of course it is. Absolutely, I love Sean to bits. So, um, where can people find you and get hold of you, Ian? So, so get hold of me. Um, so the show is Cult Connections, and you can find that uh, in all of your podcast places, of course. 
Um, social media, oh God, basically X is where I am. Did I just call it that? I do mean uh, the, the Twitter, of course. Uh, that's where I am there mainly. You can find me at Connections Cult. So it's the other way about um, uh, on the, uh, I tweet a lot. I am on threads, I go on Facebook every now and then, but I don't really, I don't really like it. Um, <laughs> so yeah, that's, that's mostly where I am. Um, and, and I do, I tweet a lot, I tweet a lot of nonsense. Um, so yeah, you can follow me on, 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 on there. I do talk about films and their TV and their biscuits and, and all kinds of Skates. stupid stuff. Yeah. Uh-huh. yeah. That's, that's cookies to Americans. Yeah. Uh-huh. Yeah. I think someone actually, you know, commented on, on that with a, with a, uh, their sort of question mark, you know, I, I don't mean what whatever they call, uh, you know, biscuits because they look they look like scones. I think so. Yes, yeah, that's what they call scones. Yeah, <laughs> that's right. So anyway, thank you for speaking with me today. This was great. You're very welcome, Mav. It's been good fun, and actually, it's nice to it's nice to come on and talk about the the, the show and and actually not have to do that much work for it either. So that's that's a pleasure. That's fine. I'll, I'll I'll do the work this time. Yeah. Uh-huh. Says the man handing it to the editor. Um, <laughs> anyway, you can find Pods Like Us on all the, the socials. Uh, yeah, Instagram, Twitter. I still call it Twitter. Uh, threads. Um, th- there's a TikTok thing that puts video clips up now, which is interesting and new. And it's weird for a 53-year-old to do something like TikTok. There you go. And you can contact us, as I said earlier, on podslikeus at gmail.com. Anyway, thank you everyone for listening and hope you listen again to another episode of Pods Like Us.